Bunker health increase. Now, what do we think about this? What do we think about this? Is it too soon? Is it uh, too little, too much? I've, I've heard it said that 3 to 4 HP would be the most that should have been attempted. 5 seems a little out there. Greetings, it might be a little OP, but let's try it out. There's always next batch to change it again. Now, it's not enough. Yeah, I guess the opinions uh, are disparate. But let's start from the start. Heroes of the patch, Storm Notes. Did I say something wrong? Let's just roll with it. Uh, January 9th, 2018. And first of all, Blaze is going to be coming out. He's out on North America right now. Today is 9th of January. It is 12 noon and a bit in East Coast, 9 a.m. in Pacific. So, let's see how it is. Uh, 6 p.m. Oh, yeah, and I'm, of course, from the Netherlands. My time zone is 6 p.m. 36. And I'll be playing it on NA because Blaze is pretty lit. Uh, he will be coming out tonight, our time, somewhere like 2, 3, 4 a.m. in Europe. That means I'll be playing him on Europe tomorrow. Now, Corporal Miles Blaze Lewis has always been drawn to the flame, but it wasn't until he joined up with Rainer's Raiders that he put his pyromania to good use. He has seen his fair share of battles since then. He has never failed to bring the heat. Of course, all of you are subs on my YouTube channel, so... Uh, you've already seen all my latest Blaze videos on the YouTubes. That means that I do not need to take you through his basic abilities, traits and heroic abilities anymore. So we'll start with new stuff. Art. Malfurion has received updated visual effects to coincide with his rework recently. And now what we've all been waiting for. Recently, changes were made to the laning process that was meant to wait the early game more. We all remember half a year ago when you get a kill, early game, three kills, it barely matters. The early game advantage was not able to be leveraged enough in order to transition to a good mid game and a good late game, provided the winning team is not making any mistakes. Oftentimes it felt like one final fight, provided both teams get to level 20, which was rather common, would determine the entire game. Even if the takedown count was 20 versus 5 and the fortifications were in favor of the left team, the right team still had a chance off the back of a single late game team fight. It is a good thing when you can leverage early advantage by playing well and expanding upon the advantage or maintaining it by safe choices, good decisions, good rotations. If you can maintain early advantage and exploit it, that is good gameplay. Otherwise, the game might as well end after 5 minutes. The rest of the 10 minutes is an extended death th animation, basically. It is not good when a few early game advantages spiral out of control without much effort by the winning team, without much good play, and that there's almost no way to come back, or indeed no way to come back for the losing team outside of a massive screw-up of the winning team. Right now, we were a little bit too far on the extreme side of early game victories propelling out of control. So, it was generally understood that the laning changes should be just tuned down a little bit. Early game does still matter and should matter, but maybe there's a little bit too much momentum on the side of the winning team. Getting double regeneration globes, having so strong minions, bosses, mercs, bruisers and hellbats and having so weak towers, forts and keeps. So let's see what Blizzard has in store for us to reduce that power a little bit. Regeneration globes, total health regen over five seconds, which is reduced now from 11.7 to 9%. And total mana regen from 7.8 to 7%. So a little bit less mana and quite a bit less health regen for globes so we can see now that they have gone with the direction of both globes your own initial globe and the opponent's globe have been weakened okay a little bit less sustain on uh, on the globe pickups and of course recently there were support nerfs 10 percent 5 percent across the board 
And together with these globes, picking up more globes in general and having them healing such a significant amount, together with the support nerfs, really meant that if you had double support, it wasn't that good because you get so much sustain from just kill power, kill pressure. For after all, if you kill the opponent in the lane, you get both globes, so you didn't need second support as much. Now, no one is hearkening back to the days of double support and saying, I wish every game was still double support. But it, this is part of the reason. I'm not saying I want to or not want to. But I'm saying this is part of the reason that double support felt even less feasible recently. Because you don't need it when you have this much sustain from the lanes. Overall, that's going to have a bunch of effects. Mercenaries, Hellbats. So the Hellbats give a minus 5% armor debuff up to 5 times, up to 25 armor debuff. Discounted both for the mercenary that could still be captured, as well as the mercenary that was already marching down the lane. And these are called Defender and Laner by Blizzard respectively. They have now done 4% per stack, so it's 4, 8, 12, 16 and 20% armor debuff, a little bit less. And they've also gotten a health nerf. Of about 800. Laner, Armor Shred, same thing. And their health is also nerfed accordingly. Now we can see that although their total health has been reduced significantly. And the scaling health per minute they get another 40 now. Instead of per minute they get another 50. We can see that it's increased on the 2nd, 3rd and 4th tier. Per level Greetings, they will get another 110. But I suspect even when you add up. 5 times 40, 5 times 110, 5 times 115, 5 times this, it will still not reach a higher amount than it did before. When you compare this one and you use all these numbers, and you compare this one and you use all these numbers. Overall, they seem weaker, the Hellbats. Knights. Defender Mage Knight will now get 20 spell armor instead of 15%. And Laner Mage Knight will also have 20 instead of 30. So before it was from 15 to 30%. And now it's always 20% across the board. So it's more consistent. It's more consistent. It's always 20%. They're weaker when defending against them. But they're a little bit harder to take. Overall. I think it's good. Br Bruises were very powerful to push with. Now the Slime Boss. Warhead Junction. It's quite a significant list of changes. But first of all, we can see that there is a 20% nerf to the total starting health pool. And it used to get 630 per level. Now it will get 500 per level on the first five levels. But you can see that even after this, 5 times 500, it will still only have 18,500 life at minute 5. That's still weaker than it was at level 1. Now you can't pick it up at level 1, of course, but this is how they grow these numbers. Eh? And then even when you add the extra amount of scaling that it gets early to mid, mid and late game, it probably will still not reach this amount, I suspect. I would have to calculate it and I'm not going to do that on stream. But overall, the bosses, they'll still be strong late game, but they're not quite a strong early game. And the same thing is pretty much for all of these as well. The spit, the basic attack, damage over time and the acid trail, which is kind of like putrid bile from stitches. It's all a little bit weaker to begin with. And then eventually comes into its own and gets stronger later and later. Forts and keeps. Okay, so gate tower and fort, gate tower and keep. All 33% damage increase to everything. Greetings, Minions, mercs, friend. monsters and heroes. And they can't attack buildings. So that pretty much is everything under the sun. It will slightly weaken early cheese where the warrior of the team tanks the tower. It can still be done, but that's a little bit more damage. It doesn't change anything about the Sylvanas early cheese because she completely locks down a fort still, which by the way, I still think is an unhealthy mechanic. And it will weaken the amount of damage she can tank while attacking someone under the gate, it will kill the minions faster. 
It will kill bosses, punishers, etc. faster. The first Punisher on Infernal Shrines has been very powerful recently, as has the Immortal. So I wonder if they're going to make any changes to those as well. This will help partially with it, but it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. I mean, it is a big deal, but I don't know if it's enough. It doesn't include summons, though. Ah. Uh... Are you sure? Hmm, I'm not sure about that. Summons, I wonder if they're counted as minions. Would have to confirm. Keep health, going to go up a little bit, a thousand extra. A summon is a monster. Are you sure about that? Hmm. Towers of Doom, altar respawn time increased from 90 to 110 seconds, wow. You know, I didn't feel that uh, altars are too close together. Uh, among all the maps that have had too short game time, I did not think that Towers of Doom was one of them. I felt like it was one of the longer maps. And this is going to draw it out a little bit. Give more time to laning, rotations, gangs, sapper camps, boss, top sapper camp, fort trades. I don't know if it, this was needed. Still no Rainer rework or buffs, that's right. Battlefield of Eternity. They have guaranteed the initial starting stage position. And the second stage also has been guaranteed. Now, I believe this, this one was already the case, but this one was not. This was random, and now it's not. Greetings. And the rest is random, and it will be announced 30 seconds after the game begins where it's going to go. And we'll get used to that soon enough, since it's standardized. Subsequent Immortal Indicators will appear on the minimap shortly after previous Summoned Immortal has been defeated. I feel like it could have been nice if they had said... How long after a previously summoned immortal has been defeated? Shortly is one of those vague terms that will be a placeholder to the exact time while they write the patch notes and they're still figuring out the time. Greetings, friend. I know it's like this with cursed tributes as well. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't say for cursed tributes how many seconds after. But again, we'll get used to it and eventually it'll be public knowledge. But it's better if they say these things anyway. Swap locations will not appear on the minimap when an immortal swaps at 50% health. Hmm, let me think. Okay, so it's randomized and when it swaps you won't know where. And because they say this so specifically, that means that they would want... They would want to make sure that you don't know where it's going to go. They feel that's good gameplay. So everyone gathers in a particular area to try and trap each other. Hmm, don't know if it's good. But that's the intention. We're trying to divine the intentions here and we'll find out if it's good later. As expected, our gameplay update for 2018 resulted in large changes to many of our game systems. While we're overall happy with the direction of the update, there have been some unintended side effects that we're hoping to remedy. We overestimated how much more powerful unlimited ammo would be for structures, and as a result, pushing mechanics have become too strong, resulting in lower game times on nearly all maps. We're giving our towers some of their teeth back with this update, which should help teams hold pushes from mercenary camps and map events. We're also making some tuning changes to some of our mercenary camps, now that we have had some time to see how they have been performing. Hellbats and Knights in particular are pushing harder than we would like, so we're reducing some of their power. We're also taking a look at the Warhead Junction boss and reducing its early and mid-game pushing power, as right now it's too strong when combined with nukes from the map event. And I think nukes could be nerfed a little bit as well, by the way, editor's note. Lastly, we are reducing the power of regeneration globes. While we like the new minigame that neutral regeneration globes provides in the laning phase, we are not comfortable with how much they're currently benefiting the team that is ahead while they are pushing into a defending team. We're also seeing players picking up regeneration globes more in general, so this will help to keep the game's overall sustain in check. 
These are some hefty changes and it's likely that there will be more needed to be done over time as things continue to settle. We'll be keeping an eye on things and are prepared to make more updates as they are needed. A dodge brawl change. And from the ranked battleground rotation, Warhead has been removed and Volskaya Foundry has been added. Nice. Notably missing is information about mecha skins, improved uh, performance-based matchmaking our, uh, metric and system, and Rainer buffs. But now we're going to go on to the next. Changes. Hanzor, Nova, Samurai, Valera, Zeratul, Malfurion, Blaze, Garros, and Johanna. Hanzo, Scatter Arrow Spread has been narrowed by 20%. Damage Reduction, 3%. 4%. 4 almost. 3, 4%. Natural Agility. Cooldown reduced from 25 to 20 seconds. The range has been increased from 8 to 10. Shield Breaker has been removed. Woohoo! Yeah! Uh, sharpened Arrow Hats, which was the 5 armor debuff per scatter arrow at level 20, has been moved from 20 and has been put in 7. New functionality. Hitting a hero with Stormbow or basic attacks reduces their armor by 5 for 4 seconds, stacking up to 25. So he's like a Hellbat now. Mounted Archery. Bonus movement speed reduced from 30 to 20. So 150 on mount and 120 if you immediately dismount. Giant Slayer. Damage increased from 1.25% to 1.5. Giant Slayer competes with Piercing Arrow. And the Stormbow and Auto Attack trading damage of 25%. And as a result, it was the weakest talent, it seems. Because the Pierce is so good on the Stormbow and so on. What did Shieldbreaker used to do? It used to do 2.5 times damage of the basic attack or and the Stormbow on shields. That meant that if Artanis procced his trait and got a shield, let's say a 1000 HP shield... Instead of hitting it for 300 damage with his auto attack, Hanzo would hit it for 1000 damage with his auto attack. With 700 damage crit extra. Something like that. It was pretty ridiculous. Um, yeah, it would hit for 700. Eh, not not 1000 maybe. It would just remove Artanis' shield immediately. It invalidated Artanis' shields, Kerrigan's shields, Tassadar's shields, Anubarak, Johanna. It was pretty crazy and unhealthy. Too good when it helped and not picked when there's no shields. It's like a side deck in a card game. A, ring, a circle of protection in Magic the Gathering. Or, uh, yeah. Well, I have no Hearthstone examples. He would take extra damage on account of having a shield. Pretty crazy. So, that one is gone. Perfect Agility. New level 20, gain a second charge of natural agility and reduce the overall cooldown by 5 seconds as well. We're reducing the spread of scatter arrows so that they're more effective when opponents aren't directly next to a wall, while also reducing the damage slightly to compensate. We've increased the range of natural agility so that it will jump over a wider variety of terrain. We've also removed Shieldbreaker because we found that it required a very specific set of circumstances to be effective, but it was extremely powerful in those rare situations. We've moved Sharpened Arrowheads to replace it, while changing its functionality to be more consistent in all situations. Nova. Snipe damage reduced by 15 damage, Pinning Shot by 5, and Precision Strike by 21 quick maths precision sniper six percent per stack and she gets up to five stacks which is 30 percent now and it used to be 25 and it has another 25 bonus upon completion as i remember so it was 50 and now it should be 55 perfect shot cooldown refund for hitting heroes increased from two to three seconds one in the chamber, another 10% nerf. And lethal decoy, 5% nerf. 
That was kind of nice. Yo, woof. I really love your stream, woof. especially how you explain everything. I learned so much through you. Thank you, smiley face. Thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoy it. I really appreciate that. The woof. <laughs> It's nice to see that the recent changes to Nova have been so widely embraced by players. However, with the addition of some new escape tools and her ability to have multiple clones out at once, we feel like her damage potential against single targets is still a little bit too high. Our data is showing that her talent tree is in a very good spot balance wise, besides a couple of outliers, which you see here. So we're also lowering her base output Nova won't be putting out as much, which is good, and compensating by increasing precision sniper's damage. This is what we call the quick match nerf, said my beloved moderator Ashiri19, and I think he's right. She also did pretty well in Hero League, and she wasn't as hated and people don't ask anymore not to pick her. There is more counterplay, but she also has more play. Overall, good design changes, but... Win rate was a little over healthy, and so they've uh, taken a little bit of power away. And a quick match nerf. Next, Samuro. Samuro. Base maximum health increase from 1650 to 1725. Yes. Health regen increase from 3.4 to 3.6. Mirror image health. Increased from 825 to 862 and a half. I think they want me to play more Samara. They want me people to taste my blade. Nice. Deflection. Armor increased from 25 to 30. Aha! I think this was the worst. Straight up. Generally speaking, Samara will not be trading blows with an enemy hero for 4 seconds straight. And so the Windwalk armor buff, which lasted during Windwalk and for up to 3 seconds after Windwalk, it gave 30% armor across the board, physical and magical. And so I found it to be far more useful to have a Windwalk armor buff, even if maybe you want to save Windwalk to run away, mid-fight, possible, you engage without Windwalk, and then you use Windwalk to get away. So the armor never really comes into play. Definitely deflection could have more uptime. And yet I found that 30 armor after Windwalk, if you use it that way, across the board was more useful than an auto attack procable 25 armor against only physical. So I didn't take deflection. Now if I intended to take the trait at 16 and at 20, I would probably take deflection slightly more often. And yet 5 armor difference, no magical. This is a good buff to balance out the talent tree, but it is a buff because of versatility. As a Sumero main, I like it. And I think it's fair in terms of balancing out the tree. You also have mirror image, which is 50 armor against only magic and only two charges. And yet it counts every time you, you split. So if you get mirrored steel at 13, which is more mirror images after auto attacks versus heroes, you would probably prefer to have the spell armor at, at 4. Friend. Either way, more talent diversity for Samuro is good, because he never had that much to begin with. Even after the rework, it got better, but this one underperformed a little, I think. This makes me sad. And if baby Jesus were here right now in my arms, he would probably be crying a woeful tune for Burning Blade got nerfed. 15% less. This is his wave clear. It was burst. But honestly, to be fair, it was by far and away the best talent at level 7. The others did not even come close. And so I do understand and accept it. Phantom Paint. 40% per image that is alive. That's up to 90%. 90% bonus base damage on Samuro competing with 50%. That is a bigger difference than 80 versus 65, which was a joke. After all, Phantom Pain had a 40 plus 40 conditional upon images still being alive. It was already only 40% if only one is alive. That meant that 
40%, so much worse than 65, if just one image dies. And it has no splash. And you are not allowed to lose your images first. And only then it outperformed Burning Blade. So it was so insanely worse than Burning Blade that no one would ever even look at it. Now, 45 at one image versus 50, still worse. So you must have two alive to justify it. And then it's 90%. That is more burst against a single target. It's true. And if you're running a burst combo, maybe you go Phantom Pain. I won't, though. I like Wave Clear too much. I'll still go Burning Blade. I'm pretty sure it's still the best. But if you are running single target burst with harsh winds at level 16, and the images, they have a bit more HP, and you want to run single target damage, Okay, maybe you go Phantom Pain. Especially if you don't take the level 1 damage quest, Phantom Pain should be good. And if you don't take the... Uh, well, if you don't... If you, if you take the level 1 crit reduction, this one gets worse. But if you take the level 1 damage quest, this could be the best. So let's move to the third one. Auto attacks refresh your crits. That's what Crushing Blow is. And the second charge. It's really good in sustained fights. If you're chopping there with your sword for 5 seconds, 9 seconds, 12 seconds, it's great. So many auto attacks, so many crit reductions. You're spamming your crit, a lot of sustained damage. And yet I still don't think Samuro can or should be played that way. Although his health is increased, he's no Muradin, you know? Who will just uh, swing that hammer forever. So overall, I would say probably still Burning Blade. And yet, it's still good to balance out trees to make the others less of a trap talent. So, bravo. Samuro has been in a good position for talent and win rate and overall performance. But we decided to slightly increase his health. Not strong reasoning, I must say. Were I a Samuro hater, someone who destroy uh well who hates going up against Samuro this would have been something I would pick apart and say if he has been healthy then why do you buff him but because Samuro is on my side <laughs> I'm happy with it Valera Garot ah finally from three billion seconds to a quarter It's a good change. This is a good change. 5% less slow, a quarter second less, and 20% less auto attack damage from after the silence. Valera's win rate was already low, guys. I see people laughing here in the chat at how little of a change this is. Her win rate was sub 50. It's very nice to get behind this and say, this is so broken. And yet, many people that die to it are playing wrong. They do not reveal her when she cloaks. They go off by themselves. They don't stay with the team. And I think Valera is a really healthy hero to be in the game. Not everyone may agree. That's okay. That's okay. Valera directly shuts down some of the most irritating heroes in the game. Tracer and Genji. She has a point and click silence to shut down over mobile heroes. She's the closest thing we have to anti mobility. Tracer, Genji cannot be stopped by normal means. You don't have to be. 1v5 diving the backline as those heroes to be effective. You do it because you can. Adapt your playstyle if there's a Valera. She does that for everyone though? That's not true. Valera shuts down hypermobile low HP heroes, but she doesn't do very well against high health non hypermobile heroes. An ETC that gets silenced does not instantly die, especially now that Hemorrhage does far less damage. Anyway, you don't have to take my word for it. 
try it out or stay entrenched in your position. But I think Valera is so much healthier now. I liked where she was at before. I didn't mind the silence duration that much. But this is a good change. And this one too. Don't underestimate these two changes. We're reducing the duration of Garot's silence slightly. So that all openers feel viable. And reducing the damage of Hammerage. So Valera doesn't have quite as much damage. So she needs to work together with her team more. Zeratul. He has a movement speed on the cloak buff that can now be 30% if you pick it over the blink mana and cooldown reduction or the greater cleave. Still don't think you will pick this or should, but there it is, a buff. Darkness Descent had a 10% passive attack bonus and an activatable for more, like Berserk. Now it's 20% passive. This one competes with Warp Skirmisher, which had like up to 30% bonus damage across the board every time Zeratul damages someone, and a Cleave talent that did more damage as well when you hit multiple people. Warp Skirmisher, one. This is Vorpal Blade, second charge, and follow through after Vorpaling. Now, 40% instead of 30. People have mostly been picking Wormhole at seven, but there's also Sustain Anomaly, which is Glarung's choice, and a Zeratul player, and the wormhole, like I said. Zeratul has the lowest win rate, so we're buffing him a bit. But he has traditionally been a high performer, as people master him, so we'll keep looking at him. Now, this is the Malfurion rework. We have already looked at this last time. This rework is uh, as was advertised on the PTR. We don't see any orange, so no new changes were made. Bunker health time, plus 5 HP. The memes. Now, if you're not familiar with the memes, in StarCraft 1 and 2, Bunker often got changed a bit. 5 seconds extra build time, 5 seconds less build time, and so on. Many, many changes. Always small changes. It's it's like the, it's the Raynor of StarCraft. Except Raynor doesn't get any buffs or nerfs. He's just forgotten in obscurity. It's the Malfurion of StarCraft, constantly getting changes. Uh, and so they, they went with the memes and buff 5 HP, it's pretty funny. <coughs> okay, Garrosh. So Garrosh has gotten the rework, which I think was healthy, and it makes it more fun to play for me. You can stun at range instead of pulling someone in, and it does a slow. I like him, but he's felt a little weak, especially in terms of damage. So let's see what they've done with him. Thanks for the subs, guys. Groundbreaker slow, up 5%. You can cast it every 7 seconds instead of every 8 seconds. And the mana cost reduced as well. Wrecking Ball can now be done every 12 instead of 14. Uh, previously it was 16, so you can throw even more people. And the mana cost has been decreased as well, but not proportionately. So it costs more mana by comparison, at least, if you cast it on cooldown. Warbreaker is the level 1 Q reduction talent. It Greetings used to go from friend. 8 to 5, and now it goes from 7 to 5. So you'll note there's no change there, only in how much it does relatively to the original cooldown. A little bit more damage as well per five levels i think it used to be 155 or something anyway a little bit more damage it's not a lot 10 percent unrivaled strength nerfed in damage that means his wave clear is getting worse from level one talent you would have to take the level four in for the kill i think it's called the level four minion uh damage 70 percent bonus damage on minions and reset if you kill it this is troubling as a Garrosh player, but also as a player who likes wave clear, this one hurts. But you can cast it more often. But once every 12 seconds is not good wave clear. Pity. And pity stayed Bilbo's hand. Into the fray. Cooldown increase from 40 to 45. This is the unstoppable 25 armor and throwing allies. Earth Shaker. Half a second stun instead of 0.6. Aww. Mortal Combo. 
cooldown reduction decreased from 8 to 7. This is just in line with the baseline reduction. So it doesn't do as much, but there's more in the base. In the end, if you take this, it'll be the same. Rough landing. Slow bonus amount decreased from 20 to 15. Same thing. It's just adjusting for the extra slow here, but it makes this one less strong by comparison. So it seems like these two are just adaptations to the base kit and they didn't want to make this one overly strong compared to those two. So his 16 tier has gotten less powerful in general, but there is more power from level one onwards. And a 0.1 second stun, no one is going to notice it that much. We're giving him a little bit more peel and control. Yeah, Q and E can be used more often, more peel and control. We're also making some tuning changes. Now, Johanna was able to turn invisible if you casted Crystal Aegis on her as she was casting Fallen Sword. She would be invisible the rest of the game until the next Falling Sword. That can now no longer be abused. Ooh, updated UI colors to improve legibility in the collection. Blaze Heroic Bundle, available until January 22nd. You announce her, Blaze and Tyrone! Nice. I'm gonna use Tyrion and answer, that's for sure. New skins, Blaze, Hazardous Blaze, blah, 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 blah. Probius, Bug Fixes, Tooltips and Typos, Casting Ultimate Evo will no longer, blah, blah, blah. Vala has a new scarf, congrats, nice shopping. Nazebo, Vile Infection bonus damage if you chose certain talents. I'm not familiar with any of these uh, bugs, nor this, nor this. Hey. Ah, good. I did notice this. Lacerate is now blue rather than purple. Good. Done. Hope you enjoyed the patch notes review. And now let's look at what is new in the shop. The shop. <laughs> Blaze Heroic Bundle. Amen, For about $12, I think it is, or so. Legendary Hero, Blaze. Amen, Fart, Strider, Hanzo, Skin Pack. Foundation Bundle. I own it. Dark Queen, Alex Strasa, Skin Pack. But uh, you must click a lot, as you can see. And you can still get the globes then. 